whole church with the peace of the Lord. Now those who are visiting us and who are watching us through the internet would like to greet you all. Let's I would like to invite also those who can to stand up so we can read the word of God in the book of Samuel chapter uh, second Samuel chapter nineteen. Second Samuel nineteen chapter nineteen. We will read Verse 24. I mean, yeah, verse 24. Nineteen twenty-four. It states now Mephibosheth, the son of Saul came down to meet the king, and he had not cared for his feet, nor trimmed his mustache, not washed, nor washed his cloak, from the day the king departed to the day he returned in peace. Our beloved Father, we would like to present before your altar your word in our lives, and we plead you for your grace, for the revelation of your Holy Spirit at this time, God, that at any time that we that the man might change from what your will, open our spiritual eyes, open our hearts to receive your word at this night. Help us to understand your objective this night. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. The church may be seated. Brothers and sisters, this text we just read speaks about David. David, he was in a battle against his own son, which raised against him. David, as a father, suffers with what just happened on this war and he was his son was defeated so David he feels a lot because in which father wants to go against his own son or fight against him but unfortunately his own son did stand up against him not following the orders that God had left he came against his own father and unfortunately David had to go against him and do the justice for that region that was commanded. So David goes in and he, he comes out victorious. David comes, he, as he comes back to his own land the word describes that as he comes back victorious, there were feasts and Mephibosheth, he comes into a situation just like, let's say, like unprepared. Because as he come before God, he didn't wash his feet. He hadn't wash, um, I mean, cut down his beard, nor wash his. But and the king asked him, "What happened to you?" And so he tried to give an excuses and excuses. And the verse twenty-six stated. And he answered, My Lord, O King, my servant deceived me. For your servant said, I will saddle a donkey for myself that I may ride on it and go to the king, because your servant is lame. So he tried to make an excuse to answer the king why he didn't go with him. My beloved ones, 
the more that we meditate on this word in, be in comparison to the days that we live in, I just would like to make sure that this message is not a way of um, correcting anybody here spe specifically, but the Holy Spirit had touched me to bring this message because it, it speaks about exactly of the situation that a lot of people live this, this type of life today in our days. So just like we stated how Mephiba said in uh, David was in this situation, this basically represents with a lot of lives today. So we know that David, he typically represents who? Jesus. He wins battles. He overcomes one of the biggest battles that ever exists, which was death. The one who gave us life, the one until this day have sustained his own church with his word, with his power. And as we see through, we see that this Jesus, the one who overcome these battles, the one who overcome all the battles and have overcome, he said that one day he would be back. He said that one day he would come and rescue his church, his faithful church, the ones who will inherit eternity. But there's a special detail, and this detail is when the king, when he would, when he will, when he'll be back. How will this church be? It's interesting because this relates to the situation of Mephibosheth. He didn't wash his feet. What does the feet talks about? It talks about a walk in the path. The path of the Lord. When our feet are dirty, it means that wherever you've been through, it's not in the will of God. When we take our feet, I mean your shoes, and we go outside, we are subjected to many impurities because it's dirty outside. There's dirt everywhere. So, in other words, the word states that we should be um, with shoes in our feet. But when we are barefooted, it means that we are not prepared. Because our path, our walk, has to be in according with what God wants from us. Which, which the way is Jesus. Jesus is the one who died for us. So as we have our dirty feet, we, we, we're not walking straight. So us as the faithful church, we have to have our feet washed clean every day before God for the power and the blood of Jesus that forgive us from, from our sins. So that's why we need to always have our shoes in our feet. The word also states that, that he did not did his beard. He didn't shave. He didn't trim his mustache. And it's interesting that in the Old Testament we have many people that they had mustaches and, and beard. We're not, here we're not talking about the physical um, beard, but as we analyze, but in Brazil, when we are going to do our identity, the um, people responsible for the, uh, the government, They don't want you to come to take picture an identity with beard because the beard ended up um, hiding every characteristic of your identity or your face. When we're talking about that spiritually, we're talking about how Mephibosheth, the fact that he didn't do his or trim his mustache is because he wasn't ready to meet the king. It speaks about the identity of a savior 
I mean, a servant with with the Lord. We need to be like God. In God, we always be saint, but we need to be close as Him as possible. We will never be perfect like Him ever. We are way beyond, way far from that. But we need to get Him as close as possible. And when He will come and and rescue us, and He will look at you and He said, "I recognize this one. I know him. He took care of himself. He did not let himself taken off by appearance, by the flesh." By the sins, I know him. It's like we have in our own light. He talks about identity. The servant he must have a type of identity, a celestial identity. And so in here, he also speaks about how he did not wash his clothes when we present somebody. So that we have to, when we when we come to somebody, we always have to come prepared and washed and clean, which represents the salvation. Salvation for us as, as the church. I'm not relating to the Pompano Beach Church, but many have their clothes dirty, and letting the world get them very dirty. The reason, the sins. But the church, they need to wash their clothes in the blood of Jesus. They have to purify their lives and making that the Holy Spirit will every day be glorified. And in the same form, we are subjected to the return of Jesus Christ. So, the faithful church and Jesus Christ. I'm sorry, I got a little lost. The church needs to be like Jesus. In, in our place uh, of work, it's interesting. Some people look at you and say, you're, you're different. There's something different about you. Because people see Jesus in you. They see your testimony. They see how you actually are. It would be even worse if we were like a Bethesda set. We would look like them, but we're not. We need to have the vest of salvation. When we accept Jesus as our own Savior, He give us the, the clothes of salvation. And at any form, we can get them dirty with sin, with sin. We have to humble and humiliate ourselves every day to God so God can live in us so that our lives may be truly transformed. Jesus is coming back. How are we living? Are we in the path? Is it being hard? But God has to sustain us every day. And he reveals himself to us every day. So as I came to uh, David asked him, why didn't he come with me, Mephibosheth? When Jesus com comes, he will say to each one of us, so what did you do? Did you follow me? Or did you not follow me? Did you come to me or not? That day, there will be no excuse. And he will say, oh God, but it's because, and they will give just excuses and excuses. But the church will say, uh, he will say to the church, come, huh? come blessing on oh, my father, my beloved ones. God gave a revelation. God revealed that. There's a man here tonight 
he has a little bit of doubt in regards to Jesus' return. That if Jesus will come. But God wants to tell him that this night he has to give him a deliverance to his household of a situation in which will, it's about to happen. He wants to give this this sign so that you may happen that he is the king of kings he will come and the church will be prepared to go with him to the eternity and enlighten your, your candles may the Lord bless us with this word it's a short word but that we may each day know that he will come and our mind should be up connected to eternity not with the things of this world blessed be the name of the Lord to God our beloved Father this time we glorify your name we thank you for your word God that your word it, it warned us and we praise you because every day you have gone you're, you're ahead of our battles God and we know that you have guided your people we know that, that at this moment we we like to praise you because you have sustained us 
praise the name of the Lord for your huge love. Praise your name in the name of Jesus. Amen. Blesses the name of the Lord. Receive our service in behalf of your name, that a word may stay within our hearts, and that we, the word might generate a transformation, that it may operate and make us every day more and more close to you that we may not we may never come out of your presence but more fixed in this path towards eternity bring us in peace that you may be with us speak with us with our health that we may always stay under your hands we praise you in the name of Jesus Amen. In your name we glorify your grace and our beloved Father and the sweet operations of the Holy Spirit may be poured over us for now and ever. Amen. The church may be seated. So the gifts they were passed on and meant that they didn't believe in the return of Jesus Christ that's something very dangerous because the return of Jesus it will happen independently of what we want or not of what we believe or not this is the project that God has for man so we need to be within this project and understand this but the blessing that the Holy Spirit wants is to deliver to this man and for the woman as well if anybody wants a prayer, we put ourselves in this position. Follow the face of the Lord.